So we're talking about a second messenger being very important mechanism. What are these second messengers? So again, I go back to this diagram where you have a hormone receptor complex activating an enzyme inside the cell, and this enzyme eventually activates a second messenger that will bring about a biological response. So the activated enzyme activates second messenger. Who are these second messengers? One, cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP is a second messenger. Two, calcium ion and associated calmodulin, also known as calcium calmodulin complex, is another second messenger. And three, products of membrane phospholipid breakdown is another second messenger. So we do have three main well-known second messenger, cyclic AMP, calcium calmodulin complex, products of membrane phospholipid breakdowns. Let's get into the details of these three second messengers. So the first one, which is really common and very important to understand, is the cyclic AMP second messenger system. We do call it adenyl cyclic cyclic AMP second messenger system because the enzyme that is being activated is known as the adenyl cyclase. So let's see what happens. You have your hormone and a receptor. And these will stimulate G protein. What are G protein? G proteins, in simple language, are like switches that will switch on and off biological processes within the cells. So if it's GS, this is known as G-stimulatory. And this will basically switch on the processes within the cell. Sometimes you have a GI here, which is known as G-inhibitory. So this will switch off whatever processes are happening within the cells. So the G protein, when activated by activated receptor, will actually activate an enzyme known as adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase will catalyze the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is our second messenger, not. And this guy will activate protein kinase. Now we go back into the kinase. So we have inactive kinases being activated to become active kinases and they are activated by cyclic AMP and these kinases as we know they are phosphorylators so they phosphorylate and once you phosphorylate you do have cell response so what are the example of hormones utilizing this system we have vasopressin v2 receptor you should note this very careful so vasopressin when activate v2 receptors in the epithelial cells it acts through this mechanism but vasopressin can act through by activating V1 receptors in endothelial cells. In so doing, it will actually activate another system. Catecholamines, when activate beta receptors, for example, in liver, when it causes gluconeogenesis, it acts uh, utilizing this mechanism. But catecholamines, when act by stimulating alpha receptors, they utilize another mechanism. You should note that. Angiotensin 2 in epithelial cells utilizes this mechanism. Angiotensin II in vascular cells or smooth muscle cells utilizes another system. And of course you do have a bunch of other hormones utilizing this system. That's why we say it. a lot of hormones actually act through this system. So what you can see very quickly here is protein and peptide hormone. Most of them, they actually utilize this system. So this is what you can see very fast. But you need to note uh, what happened with vasopressin because you have specific receptors catecholamine beta receptors angiotensin 2 epithelial cells later on you will realize that angiotensin 2 when acting different cells it can actually utilize different mechanisms the same for vasopressin the same for catecholamines so these are the things that you need to note so what are the example of specific actions that happens when the cyclic AMP system, second messenger system, is activated. So if this happens in thyroid cells, we have our TSCH, thyroid stimulating hormone, activating a receptor, eventually activating adenyl cyclase, an enzyme that will um, catalyze the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP, and cyclic AMP will bring about a biological response and the biological response here is formation of T3 and T4, formation of thyroid hormones. But the same system in adenocortical cells, you have ACTH or adenocorticotrophic hormone 
binding to its receptor in the adrenal cortex, activating adrenal cyclase, conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP, and this guy, a second messenger, will bring about a biological response. And in adrenocortical cells, a biological response is secretion of adrenocortical steroids like cortisol, aldosterone, and all the hormones that are produced by the adrenal cortex. Again, if this happens in renal epithelial cells, you have phosphopressin or ADH binding to its receptors within the renal epithelial cells, activating adenyl cyclase, adenyl cyclase, conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP, and then you have a biological response. In this case, it is increased water permeability. So what you can see here is you have the same mechanism, but different biological responses based on the hormone and the cell types. Not.